Hello everybody, this is Nash at Center Parks in Penrith, um, and today we have a video for you on aerosol versus paintball. So I've actually been airsofting for around about two years now. Um, I haven't actually done paintball up until yesterday where I played it just briefly here at Center Parks. Um, now I want to cover a couple things in my little versus video here. I realize that it might bring a lot of heated debate and trolling on the video. So I just want to make everybody aware that I'm trying to make this as impartial as possible. First off, I want to go over my personal experience of what my paintball experience was at Center Parks because it may be quite a little bit different to what a lot of you are used to in your own paintball arenas. Um, secondly, I want to go over my own kind of impressions of pros and cons versus airsoft and paintball, not necessarily uh, just to do with my personal experience, but from what I've seen in other media as well. Um, hopefully you guys will be able to be able to drop your own pros and cons and let me know what's probably a good, better comparison. We're trying to make something as impartial as possible, and I'm probably the one of the people who is least impartial to the whole aerosol versus paintball debate. So first thing I want to talk about is rules that we are exposed to in the current paintball battles that we are playing. Um, first rule that sticks out the most is that you only are eliminated from a match or have to be sent to respawn, essentially dead, if you have paint splattered on you. If you suffer um, basically a hit from a paintball and it doesn't actually impact upon you, you do not count as out, you are still in play. The paintball actually has to burst and leave a mark on either your gun or your body. Now, for your head, headshots do not count. Um, if a paintball hits your head, whether it just bounces off or it splats, you are not out the game and you can still play. The last rule that I would have a problem with is that you're not allowed to shoot anyone within five meters. Um, for the paintball that we are playing, you have no take or hit rule or bang rule where you're allowed to ask someone to take their hit within five meters. If you are within five meters of another player, you need to back off and actually gain some distance between them so then you can actually make a shot, which seems a little bit clunky to me. Now, I would like to uh, talk about a little bit about the actual paintball guns that we're using uh, during paintball itself. Now, paintball guns are um, small little guns which are gas propelled um, through a little uh, compressed gas canister at the back of the gun. Um, and they shoot paintballs probably around about uh, two centimeters in diameter. Um, the paintballs are contained in a unit called a hopper, which sits at the top of the actual uh, gun and that's what feeds in your individual paintballs. Paintball hopper holds around about 200 rounds. So now that I've talked a little bit about the guns and the gameplay themselves, I actually want to start on doing a criticism of my experience of paintball versus airsoft. Now, the first thing I want to bring up, which I think is really great, and this is probably the most obvious one, is that it's very, very clear to tell when you are actually out at paintball. Obvious paint splatter, which will be on your um, gear or gun, as it were, and from there, if you can't tell that you're out, like if you can't see a mark on your back or whichever, either a teammate or a marshal can come over to you and say that you're actually out. Now, the whole paintball bursting upon your overalls or whatever you're wearing is sounds like a really, really good idea, but I personally have problems with it. Uh, the first thing is that I was noticing when I was playing is that if I shoot somebody, um, it takes maybe about three shots before I have most definitely, on average, 
hit them with a paint ball and the paint balls burst. Um, I get really irritated as an airsofter when I've hit someone with a paint ball and it just bounces off them and then they can continue playing. In my personal opinion, if I've hit you, you with some kind of rifle, whether it be real rifle, uh, airsoft, paintball, laser quest, if I've hit you, that's you out as far as I'm concerned. Now on the flip side, I realize that airsoft has its drawbacks with the whole are you hit or not scenario. Uh, obviously there are cheat callers and people who will be cheating within airsoft, that's something which I don't think is ever going to stop. Um, the paint scenario kind of eliminates this altogether. But the benefit with airsoft is though, if I've hit someone anywhere on either their body, their head, their gun, or whichever, that does count as a hit towards them. Now, I mentioned in the rules earlier that uh, during paintball, headshots do not count. Um, this is probably a really, really good idea for the fact that it stops people from just clogging up your goggles with paint and causing the enemy player um, to have to wipe their goggles, um, which can be a dangerous scenario. Now, the whole headshots thing can get a little bit annoying. Um, I found that when people are poking their heads around corners to peek, as it were, um, if you're not able to shoot them in the head, you can't really take advantage of them peeking and that little risk that comes along with it. In airsoft, if someone's peeking around a corner, you can usually take advantage of this by, well, shooting them in the face. Um, the general rule in airsoft, though, is if you can only see somebody's head, you're allowed to take a shot at that target. Um, but the general kind of gentleman rule of thumb in airsoft as well holds that if you could see more than somebody's head, you take a shot at something else. So if you could see, for example, someone's head and an arm, for instance, you try and make shots at their arm. Um, it's something which should hold for all players. It probably doesn't in retrospect. Um, but I tend to prefer being able to punish someone for peeking around a corner in the first place. So while... One is not allowed to take shots at a person's head during paintball. Um, there is kind of a balance to this in the fact that you have, or are able to shoot their gun. And on the gun, you have this massive hopper unit on top which you can actually shoot, which makes a much larger target. And in my opinion, a lot easier to hit someone's gun in paintball than it is to hit someone's gun in airsoft. So hits in where you can and are able to take hits aside. Um, the other thing I wanted to address is the five meter hit rule, which I um, had to experience as part of paintballing. Um, now it's under my understanding that uh, a lot of paintball sites don't operate the five meter rule where you're not allowed to shoot a player within five meters. Um, that's fine. Um, personally, that's how I prefer to play airsoft. If I am playing airsoft, I wish to have the option of actually shooting someone within five meters, as long as you are not actually using a high-powered gun. A lot of you paintballers are going to have to help me out here um, with the five meter rule. Does your site play it? Uh, what are you allowed to do to a player within five meters? Um, if you do have any kind of interesting rules that you think might want to add to this debate, do leave it in the comment section below. Now I realize as well a lot of airsoft sites do uh, do have different rules when it comes to close quarters combat and what happens within 5, 10, 15 meters um, in terms of are you allowed to shoot someone or not. Um, the current way which I prefer to play and which a lot of the sites that I play at play um, works like this. Basically if you are within 10 meters of a player um, you can ask them to take their hit, or what is more commonly known as the bang rule. Um, you can ask the player to take their hit, and if they want, they can call themselves as hit. But if they feel like they can quick draw on you, or that you are not prepared enough to actually shoot them, they can turn around and shoot you back before you can actually get the hit on them. Um, this makes it a lot more interesting and a lot more fun, in my opinion, when it comes to shooting people in close quarters combat. Um, I don't know if this kind of scenario would be feasible in paintball or not, um, mostly because I was informed by someone that paintballs don't tend to burst uh, upon another player within five meters, so it might be a bit pointless. 
Next thing I probably wanted to talk about is the biggest issue for me um, during paintball was probably the guns itself. Um, now I realize for the paintball guns used at Center Parks, these are probably used several hours every single day. So they go under a lot of wear and tear and I have no idea how often they replace them. Um, now for these paintball guns, I was finding constantly paintballs are arcing left, right, up, down, and they have very, very, very poor accuracy. Um, if you were any more than 15 meters away from your target, you would have to put a good spray on them to actually hit anything. Um, it's a lot of kind of random chance when it comes to those paintball guns. As well as that, uh, I found that the paintball guns don't tend to have that much range as well. Um, there is a lot of drop shotting going on if you are at any significant range. Um, and I think that's a bit kind of, that uh, just feels awkward to me as an airsofter. Um, and as any shooter for that matter, you should be able to shoot straight at your target. If you are putting drop shots on them, that shouldn't count. And on that note as well, uh, the rule for airsoft, sorry, sorry, no. On that note as well, the rule for paintball is that you're not allowed to mortar people, which is essentially putting shots into the air, which will land across the site on somebody. Um, that's all good, but if you are, for example, on top of a building and you are putting shots down at a player on a lower level than you, and the shots are dropping down in an arc, do you take your hit? Do you not? Don't know. How do you handle that sort of situation? Range is definitely a problem. Um, you would find that in an airsoft gun, you have a hop up unit. The hop up unit is designed to put spin on the BB, and the spin is what will allow you to have better range on the airsoft gun because the BBs are spinning in the air, which will allow them to give them more lift as they begin to decrease in velocity. To my knowledge, the paintball guns that we were using do not have any sort of hop up unit and probably don't put any much spin upon the paintballs. Now, I was playing with my father. Um, who was complaining to me that the paintballs were actually spinning in all directions. You would find that the paintballs would spin left and right, so they would actually curve in the trajectory as they're being shot, making them just that much more unreliable. But this could be caused by all sorts of things. It could be caused by dirt inside the gun, um, any kind of crease, you don't know. These guns are being used so many times a day, it could be causing a lot more reliability issues than you would be experiencing in normal paintball guns. So I would like to know from a lot of pro paintballers out there, do you have that many issues with accuracy in your own guns? Um, how much maintenance do you need to do in them? Um, something I'm very curious about, and I'd like to see if you guys need to put so much work into your guns in order to make them fire just as accurately as we are softers do. One thing I would like to mention, though, is price. Um, price is a huge issue, which... Um, I think a lot of paintballers complain about, and certainly a lot of people do when they compare the two. Now, for a game here at Center Park, bearing in mind that a lot of things are a lot more expensive here, because you obviously can't go much where else, um, both myself and my father paid £30 each for each of us, um, and that included 200 paintballs. If we were to buy more paintballs, it costs £7 for 100 paintballs. Now, if you compare Airsoft to that, I can play at some sites uh, cheap for £20, and some expensive sites you can pay upwards to £35. Now, the £35 price, in my experience, has actually included lunch as well, so that isn't too bad. If we talk about the cost of BBs themselves, um, now I can pick up a carton of about 1,000 BBs for around about a tenner. Um, now if you compare that to the seven pounds for 100 paintballs, that's a massive difference. This means so many things. Oh, obviously if you play the same way, you're gonna be playing a lot cheaper for airsoft. Or if you want to, you can just be that much more trigger happy when you're playing airsoft in comparison to paintball. If I have to draw a conclusion to this comparison, however, it would be that neither paintball or airsoft is really better than the other. It is like trying to compare two similar sports, like tennis or squash or American football and rugby. All you need to know is that both sports are extremely fun, and as long as you remain to have fun, then any time you spend on the sport is time well spent. Thanks again for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys next time.